There is no time to rest. We've got heaps to do today. We've got mud to make, saplings to grow, and we're gonna get smelting. Hey all, this is Luke and welcome back to Sky Factory 4. We have a ton of stuff to get through today. So let's not muck around, let's muck in instead. We've got plenty to do. So as a quick recap of last episode, we um we made some pretty good advancements. So we managed to get our cobblestone generator up and going, which is now filling up that chest that we've got on top. And uh, that chest is very, very nearly full, which means that we're gonna very, very soon get the cobble cobble advancement for filling up a chest with cobblestone from the generator, which is really cool. So that's uh, ticking along nicely there. We've uh, expanded our platform just a little bit to give us some more space. And with the bonsai pots that we crafted last episode, I've taken the liberty of uh, filling out a bunch of these sort of placed chests with bonsai pots on top and chucked all of our current working sapling types onto them. Now, I have chosen to probably do a bit of overkill here. I've actually got a double chest and two pots for each tree type underneath. Now, um, that's gonna be good in the short and long term because when it comes to the resource generation that we're gonna be working on, um, I mean, sure, I could have gone with one for each tree type, but uh, having a couple going at once will give us a lot more resources growing, and it'll just speed the process up ultimately, and uh, later on when we put some, some more automation behind this, there's going to be a much uh, higher rate of resource generation ticking through, which is great. So um, we've got a, a few more saplings on the list to create today, so I've uh, taken the liberty of setting up a couple of uh, spaces for those already, um, so we'll fill those up as the episode goes on. Um, but yeah, otherwise, let's uh, check in with our advancement book and see what we've got on the list for today. So um, next up, we're going to be looking at some more saplings. We've got the cottonwood sapling. We've got the tin sapling at uh, probably a little later on in this episode because we're going to need to get some um, some smelting happening to, to create that. Um, and we've got the coal sapling. Now, um, that all being said, we've actually got some pretty easy advancements that we've missed up on the top row here, which we can knock out right now. So um, the cobble cobble's about to tick over. We've got the obtain obsidian advancement though. So study in the dark arts. Now, now that we've got water and lava, this is really simple. So all you gotta do is grab that bucket that we have. We need to fill it up with water. So we'll just grab that from the center there and take it over to our cauldron full of lava and click on that, and then all of a sudden we have a block of obsidian. So just like in vanilla Minecraft, when uh, lava source blocks meet water, you create obsidian. This way you can actually do it yourself. So we have a single block of obsidian, which will come in handy a little bit later. So let's chuck that in the chest. Got a few resources that we've been picking up in the chest. Uh, so a bit of flint has been dropping from the gravel trees, which is handy. Uh, we've got some bone meal from creating bone from the, uh, the bone saplings, uh, bone trees. Um, we've got some sand and I've smelted some glass for some stuff that we're going to be building later today um, from the sand trees, of course, and a few bricks left over from creating the bonsai pots out of the clay. Um, so, yeah, all of the tree based resources are under the tree pots themselves. So I've been storing the appropriate resource in each of those chests just for better organization because they tend to drop quite a bit. And over time, we're going to be filling up a lot of our inventory space. So um, now speaking of space and uh, sort of storage management, we do have that double chest, which we're using to store stuff at the moment. But later today, I'm actually going to want to use that space next to the furnace here. And I only want a single chest worth of space, but I still want to be able to store quite a bit of stuff in there. So there is a much more effective way of organizing content instead of using a horizontal double chest if you want to take up less space, if you only want to take up one square of space. So um, in addition to the chest, a really, really cool addition in Sky Factory 4 is we actually have cabinets. So if you look under JEI by typing in cabinet, we actually see there's a few different types. This one from the Rustic uh, mod pack is what we're going to be after in this case. So we click on that. We can actually create basic cabinets out of wooden planks and wooden trapdoors. Now we can build all of that because it just takes basic wood. So wooden trapdoor, we can uh, make a couple of. So I'm just going to move those items onto the grid, make a couple of those now. And for the rest, let's just get ourselves some more wooden planks and go back to the cabinet. Now we're gonna want two of these just to demonstrate how they work. So uh, let's go one and two. Okay, 
Now, as with the chests, when you actually open up a chest, you can see the bonsai pot doesn't get in the way. The great thing about wooden cabinets is that you can actually put them sunk into the floor, and when you open the door, the door won't get in the way from the side either, which is excellent. So let's do that right now. So this chest, we're going to have to move first. Another really cool feature that uh, most people don't realize in Sky Factory is that there's a number of items that you can actually pick up without having to break first. So if I wanted to move this furnace, for instance, um, and not have to take all of the stuff out from inside the furnace, you can actually hold down shift when you're really close to it and right click. And that allows you to pick up the item and actually move it around. So that's really, really cool. Now with chests, that's super handy because it means that we can actually pick up half of a double chest. And it also means that we don't need to break it and have all the contents spill out onto the ground, which is great. So we're just going to move that to the side temporarily. Um, and as we move it, it's taken half of the items in it. The other half is still up the top on the other chest. So we can move that around later. Um, actually, no, let's move that now. So we'll just get that out of the way. All right. Now with our cabinets, uh, we actually want to basically put them here. So we're going to chuck them down uh, in the middle of the platform there. So we're going to need to get rid of that little bit of wood. Let's move that out of the way. Okay. So our cabinets. Now I'll just demonstrate how these work up top first before we uh, chuck them in the, the hole there. So if I put down a single cabinet, it's great. It's just like a chest with a front facing door. So you can open it from the front. It opens up like a little wooden safe. Very, very cool. Now, if you put another one on top, if you put it, the way you actually have the crosshairs matters here. If you put the crosshairs on the opposite side to where the door underneath is, you'll end up with two cabinets with different sided doors. So they open separately. You have one opening from the left and one opening from the right. If instead you put it down on the same side as the existing door, actually I'm gonna to have to break it for this to work now that I've actually placed it. So let's just get that one back up. No, all right, hang on. We've got an ax we're gonna to need to repair. So let's just chuck that in the repair grid. Grab that. All right, so bust that one up again. There we go, okay. Now if we place that cabinet again with the crosshairs on the same side as the door handle with one underneath, it actually combines the two and we get one large cabinet with a single door that opens up, just like a double chest that stands on top of each other instead of side by side. So really, really cool. So that is what we're gonna sink into the floor. So we're gonna pick that up again and we're gonna place one after the other in that gap in the floor and then that'll open up for us and create a really awesome store-based chest. So, wait, no, I got it on the wrong side. So we'll have to chuck that on the right side. There we go, and bam, so there we go. Big door opening up, double chest, sunk into the floor, takes up a lot less space, very, very handy. Now I could have done that for all of the bonsai pots over here as well. I could have had even more storage space by going a double uh, cabinet sunk into the floor, but I don't think we're actually gonna need that much space. So I think a, a double chest sort of horizontally is fine. With more of our generalized storage, I might use some of these cabinets just to mix it up a little bit. So uh, yeah, let's move all that stuff over quickly. So we'll just chuck it in the cabinet. So there we go, all that stuff that we're not gonna use for a little while. Let's put it in there. So flint, sand, glass, and brick. Fantastic, all right. Now I had to repair my wooden ax a second ago, which was a shame because we've kind of gotten past using wooden tools. We've got an infinite source of cobblestone now, and we've upgraded our uh, crook to a cobblestone cr crook or a stone crook. So it's probably about time to upgrade our basic ax tool as well. And instead of making a cobblestone ax, we're gonna make something much better. So as it happens in Sky Factory 4, there is a combined tool that takes an ax, a shovel and a pickaxe and blends them all together into one single device called a Paxel. And as it happens, creating a Paxel is actually one of our advancements on one of the other tabs. So if we look over onto the age of enhancements, we have Paxel Rose, which is one of the advancements here. Combine a shovel, pickaxe and ax to make a Paxel. Now, we don't want to make a wooden Paxel because that'd be a bit of a waste of time. So let's make a cobblestone or a stone Paxel and uh, that'll give us much more bang for our buck. So we're going to need some cobblestone for this. So let's go, hey, there we go. And speak of the devil, we've actually just completed the cobble cobble advancement. So that chest is now full. We've got the cobble cobble advancement. Great work. All right. So let's just take a few of those uh, cobblestone blocks 
and we're going to make some tools. Now, in order to make a Paxil, you actually have to have fresh tools of each of the three different types. You can't have something that you've been using a little bit and that's taken damage because it needs to be a brand new item for it to combine properly and, uh, and work like this. So we're gonna need some sticks. All right, so first up we have shovel, piece of cake. Let's grab that shovel. We need a ax, so again, let's grab that. We need a pickaxe, so let's grab, whoop, wrong way around. Let's go a pickaxe, three cobble across the top. All right, and to blend all three of these together, we grab the pickaxe in the middle, we grab the ax on the front, the shovel on the rear, I think that's right, and a couple of sticks, and there we go. There is our stone paxel. This tool is fantastic. In fact, it is so good that we're gonna take that wooden ax that we had before and we're just gonna chuck it off the edge because we don't need that piece of rubbish anymore at all. So with a stone paxel now, we have the benefits of an ax, we have the benefits of a shovel and the benefits of a pickaxe all blended into one tool, which means that we can keep repairing one thing instead of three different tools. And it saves a whole bunch of space in our hotbar as well, which is great. Um, and uh, we're going to be using the Paxel quite a bit because when it comes to harvesting these trees on the bonsai pots, of course, the axe is what we want. So we're going to be sort of moving through and, uh, and clicking on these bonsai pots heaps to get those resources and chuck them in our chest there. So uh, yeah, expect to see a fair bit of use from that one. All right, so that's great. We've just upgraded that tool. Very, very handy. Now, another thing that we're going to need today is to create a second cauldron. There's some things that we're going to need to make, um, which are going to require us to put some water in a cauldron. And this one's kind of being taken up by our lava at the moment. Um, we could repurpose it, but uh, yeah, we're, we're going to keep this one for lava, I think. In fact, we're empty on lava at the moment. So let's chuck a few more cobble in there at the moment. Let's get that lava going. All right. So we're going to create a second cauldron. Um, this one for the purpose of water and some of the other stuff we're going to make. So again, simple, simple. Just grab those seven blocks of cobble create a cobblestone cauldron. We're gonna chuck this one down here and uh, we're gonna jump in and put some water in that right now because that is something we're gonna need in just a sec. Alrighty, so another advancement that we have actually missed, which is a really, really simple one, which we can jump on and do now, is this one up top, stop slabbing yourself. So this one requires us to save space and craft a crafting slab, a furnace slab, or a chest slab. Now, we've kind of got our chest situation sorted. I'm not really interested in a chest slab right now. Uh, crafting slab we could make, but we've already got a crafting bench. But furnace is going to be handy today because we're actually going to be uh, furnacing quite a few different items. We're going to be cooking a bunch. So let's create a couple of furnace slabs. And that's what I actually want to put in this space here. So we're going to put two furnace slabs in here just, you know, for a bit of fun. All right, so let's grab some more cobble. Um, creating a furnace slab is really, really simple. We can look it up on JEI, but... Uh, Let's just check that. So I believe it's just chucking two furnaces on top of each other. So furnace slab, there we go. And it is, no, we only need a single furnace and uh, put it on the crafting grid and that'll create two furnace slabs. It basically splits it in half. So let's do that. So single furnace, there we go. Put it back on the grid and we've got two furnace slabs and we've completed the stop slabbing yourself advancement. Really simple, so chuck those one on top of the other. So that's actually three furnaces there. We can have three different items going at once. We've got a large furnace and we've got two small ones. The thing with the small furnaces is that you can only put half as much content in them. So instead of a sack of 64 blocks in the fuel area or in the output, you can only put 32. So that's okay. What, what we want at the moment is more um, furnaces rather than you know capacity in them. We're just going to be wanting to you know cook a large range of different things. So it's handy to have a bit of variety there. So um, anyway, that's looking pretty good. Let's check in with our advancements book and let's see what we actually need to do next to get ahead today. So saplings, we've got the cottonwood sapling, we've got the coal sapling, and we've got the tin sapling. Start with cottonwood, I think. So uh, in order to make a cottonwood sapling. We need to check out the recipe on JI, and I believe we're actually going to need some jungle trees for this one. So, all right, cottonwood sapling. So a cottonwood sapling, to create one of those, we need a single jungle sapling, and we need either cottonwood acorns, which we're not going to have, or we need bone meal and vines. Now, vines, fortunately, we can create from the jungle saplings themselves because you can actually get a jungle sapling and put it on that drying rack that we have to create vines. Um, the, uh, the bone mill is simple because we've got that already. So all we need to worry about really is the jungle sapling. Now, in order to create a jungle sapling, you can actually take a clay sapling and you can put it in a cauldron full of mud 
and that will create a jungle sapling. So that's hence why we needed this new cauldron. Now I've put water in there already and it may not surprise you to know that in order to create mud, all we need to do is walk up to it with a block of dirt when it's already filled with water and we can actually just chuck that in there and it turns the whole thing to mud. Fantastic. So a cauldron full of mud, now all we need is those clay saplings. So let's go over to our clay area here. So um, we're going to make a bunch of jungle trees because we're going to need one for the recipe and we're going to need eight. Um, well, I don't think we need eight. We only need a couple, but let's make a bunch anyway. So we've got eight drying racks. Let's use them. Okay, so let's go and chuck that clay sapling in. There we go. There is our jungle sapling. Fantastic. So I'm going to actually make a whole bunch of these and we're going to run out of water, which means we need to refill that and repeat this process. So again, water dirt block in there to create mud. Let's push a few more of those clay saplings through. One more time should be the charm. And there we go. So we've got nine jungle saplings now. Okay, so we're gonna grab eight of those and we're gonna put them on the drying rack to create those vines for us. Vines will come in handy for a few things as we uh, progress. Um, and then we've got that last jungle sapling which we're gonna use for the recipe as well. Okay, easy peasy. Let's look ahead to some of the other stuff. So a coal sapling is the next thing we're gonna to have to worry about today. So let's go and look at the menu of saplings on JEI. Now the coal sapling, we actually need a birch sapling and we can smelt the birch sapling to create a coal sapling. How do we get a birch sapling? Well, we can actually get a birch sapling by taking a sand sapling and putting that in a cauldron full of water and that will create a birch sapling. So. Easy peasy. We have the sand sapling. We can do that right now. So let's go over to our sand area. Let's grab one of those sand saplings. Actually, let's create a few. Why not? We'll go four. Um, and we are going to just pull that cauldron up because we don't want the mud in it. We want to just put water in it. So let's grab that bucket again. Water, cauldron, sand saplings, and birch saplings. Piece of cake, we now have four birch saplings. All right, so let's use our new furnace slab. So we can put a bunch of fuel in either of those and we're gonna create maybe a couple of coal saplings. I think two should be enough to get us started. Um, actually, no, let's, let's go the whole four. We'll have a few extras left over, why not? There we go, we've got our coal sapling. We have completed the 16 tons advancement. We have coal saplings. Fantastic. All right, so now that we've got two of those, we can actually use the bonsai pot area that I set up previously. And uh, we're gonna chuck those uh, coal saplings in there and start getting some coal growing. So that'll uh, save us the trouble later of uh, having to use wood for fuel. We can start using coal once we generate enough of that, which is a bit more effective and uh, burns through a whole lot less of our wood. Now our jungle saplings have actually dried out now. So we've got all of the vines that we want. So let's collect those off of the drying racks. Bang, bang, bang. Okay, and back to the recipe for creating that cottonwood sapling. So now we've got all the materials we need. So we've got the three bone meal, we've got the vines, and we've got the jungle sapling. So bang, bang, we've done it. Uh, we might just create a second one of those actually. So uh, what are we missing? We just need that jungle sapling, I think. Um, yep, that's the only one we're missing. So we'll just create one more of those. Let's go back and grab water, dirt to mud. Grab the clay sapling and actually we're going to be able to do four of them with the full cauldron full of mud. So we might as well make the most of it. Uh, and we'll dive back in and make the saplings. Okay, so we've got a few spares. We're going to chuck the spares in here just for now. And that last jungle sapling we're going to use to create a extra cottonwood sapling. So gives us enough to fill up that second bonsai pot. And now we have our cottonwood ready to go, which means that after that's grown a little bit, we can actually grab some string. We can work towards creating our bed, which is another advancement. And uh, yeah, we're doing pretty well so far today. Let's actually chat about what we need to get this tin stuff going. So in order to make a tin sapling, we actually need to start getting into smelting. So a tin sapling requires a birch sapling, which we now have, which is great. Um, but it requires molten tin. In fact, we don't just need molten tin. We actually need to be able to pour molten tin over the top of a birch sapling while it's on a casting tray. So we need to build some stuff for that. So we need to actually get some of the smelting mechanisms put together 
and uh, construct that so we can actually get smelting. Now, the thing about smelting is that there is a huge amount of smelting tools in the Tinker's Construct mod. You can create a whole bunch of uh, big smeltery machines. And if we look up in uh, JI, you can see a, a bunch of these pieces here. So, you know, the uh, we've got the seared bricks, the seared glass, we've got the seared window, the seared tank, all that kind of stuff. Now, unfortunately, the seared uh, smelting equipment is only available once we've unlocked one of the uh, prestige unlocks. So again, if we go to the prestige window, then you'll see that we've actually got, it just smelts my heart, which unlocks the blocks needed to build a Tinker's Construct smeltery, but it costs two prestige points. So we're actually quite a way away from being able to do that. So we need a better sort of short-term solution. So fortunately, there is one. There is actually another way to build a smeltery. It is a much more compact smeltery and it's made out of porcelain. So let's have a look for that now. Now, porcelain is a much easier to obtain building material for us currently because we actually have all the parts we need for it. We can create pretty much all of the same sorts of uh, area uh, blocks with the, the porcelain stuff, um, but it's gonna be a much more compact smeltery. It's only gonna be over a few blocks instead of like a massive um, sort of casting pit. But we're gonna need a bunch of these uh, porcelain tanks to put uh, under our um, smelting area to provide the heat needed to melt the material. Uh, we're gonna need um, some of the casting tables and casting basins to start making molds of things and to cast full blocks. Um, we're gonna need some of the faucets uh, we're going to need the actual melters. So there's a bunch of different things here. Um, most of these require a tiny bit of glass or porcelain bricks. And porcelain bricks are actually something we can do right now. A porcelain brick requires unfired porcelain. It works very similar to clay. And unfired porcelain we can actually make using clay and bone meal. Fortunately, before we started today, I actually went ahead and did a bunch of harvesting. So we have a whole bunch of clay and bone meal ready to go because we're going to probably all up use about 60 or so blocks of porcelain today. So I'm going to jump in now and actually make a whole bunch of that. So let's get a full stack of 64 clay. Let's get a full stack of 64 bone meal and let's make a bunch of unfired porcelain. Now we actually need to fire that to create the porcelain bricks. So let's do that now. Let's grab this stuff off of our smelting area or our furnace area. And we're going to chuck a full stack of porcelain in. Well, actually, yeah, should we go the full stack? No, let's split that a bit. Actually, we're going to put 32 there. We're going to put 32 here. We'll split that up a little bit. Um, and uh, what we need to do with the third one, there are actually some pieces to this which we don't want to fire the porcelain. Similar to when we were creating buckets before, you can't create a bucket out of three clay bricks. You actually need to use three clay pieces and make that into an unfired bucket and fire the bucket in the furnace to, to get the cooked version, the hard version of it. Now, similar to that, there is one piece that we're going to need for the, uh, the smelting, which is actually the porcelain faucet. This is the tap that sits on the side of the devices that allows you to pour out of it. Now we can't create a porcelain faucet by combining three porcelain uh, bricks. We actually need to create an unfired faucet first and then cook that in the furnace similar to how we did the bucket. So three unfired porcelain creates an unfired faucet. Now we're actually gonna need about, I think four faucets. I'm gonna make a super big smelter today. It's gonna be more than what we need immediately, but it's gonna save us some time later on. So let's actually just do it all in one hit. So let's take the unfired porcelain, uh, unfired porcelain, I should say. Um, actually, let's make five taps. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Won't hurt to have a spare. All right, those are five unfired faucets. We're gonna use that extra furnace slab. We're gonna chuck those faucets in there and that'll cook away ready for us to go. Um, so it's going to take a little while to, to fire all this uh, porcelain into bricks so that we can create our uh, porcelain uh, smelting blocks. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to get that done and we'll be right back to put all that stuff together. Okay, we're back. The furnace has done its job. We have a stack of porcelain bricks now, which should be more than enough that we need for creating all of the smeltery materials. Um, and uh, we've got a little bit of glass that I uh, manufactured earlier. So just again, taking all of the sand resin and sand acorns to create sand and then putting the sand in the furnace to create glass. So we're gonna need a few of those. Um, I'll just move all of those in my inventory for now. So, okay, we're gonna make our smelty area over here. I'm gonna need about three blocks space across and then a bit extra for the different parts. So let's get stuck into it. So we can go into porcelain, porcelain smelting 
gear. So porcelain tank, that's gonna be what we're gonna start with. So the tank, again, is the heat source. It's what we actually chuck, in this case, lava into to keep the uh, melters on top hot and actually melting the content. Now there is two ways to do that. You can actually have the porcelain tank and fill it with lava, um, or you can actually have a porcelain heater, which takes more of your mundane sorts of fuels like uh, you know your coal and, and things like that. Now the problem with the heater, even though it's a bit easier to sort of craft and use, is that it doesn't generate enough heat to melt a lot of the different blocks that we're gonna to want to be melting. So we're starting with tin, which doesn't require a huge amount of heat, but when we start getting onto iron, we actually do need a larger amount of heat, which is where the lava comes in. So we're just gonna bypass that entirely. This time, we're just gonna go straight to the porcelain tank and start working with lava immediately, given that we've actually got our lava on tap now effectively anyway, so why not use it? So let's start off with porcelain tanks. We are gonna require three porcelain tanks, so let's do that times three. So chuck those on. There we go. We have three porcelain tanks. So let's say that that's going to start off about, let's build it about here, I think. So tank number one, tank number two, tank number three. Fantastic. Um, you would have seen a second ago that we just unlocked another advancement. So if we look over to the age of, where are we? Age of farming? No. Age of Enhancement, that's the one. So we've actually got all of these porcelain uh, smelting advancements here as well. So creating a tank, uh, creating the melter. We actually do get an advancement for creating the uh, the heater. So we'll make one for the purposes of that. Um, and we've also got one for the alloy um, smelter, which we're gonna be creating in just a second as well. So nice and easy. Um, okay, let's get back onto that. So we've got our tanks now. We're gonna create a, let's go with the uh, the melters. So we're gonna need three of the melters. So again, one, two, three. It's gonna take our last block of glass. So hopefully we don't need any more of that. Um, all right, so our melters, actually we don't need three melters, but that's okay. We might be able to use the third one for something else. We just want two of those. So we're actually gonna put a melter on just these two sides because in the middle, we're actually gonna put an alloy melter. Um, an alloy melter works to put two different types of molten metal that combine and create alloys in the center. Now we're not going to need to create alloys for a while yet, but we're just going to set it up now because it saves us the trouble later and it means that we don't have to deconstruct this at a later time. Um, all right, so these are almost ready to start smelting at the moment. We've got the melter on top, which takes the different types of meltable material there. It fills up with the fluid of uh, molten metal in the middle or some other substances besides metal. Um, and then it actually has a fuel gauge too, which shows us whether it's actually uh, receiving heat from below or not. So in this case, we have the tank below and that is going to receive heat as soon as we fill it with lava. So let's take a bucket full of lava We'll chuck it in there and you'll see that we actually have a thousand millibuckets worth of lava in that tank at the moment and it takes up to 4,000. That'll gradually deplete as we use it and, uh, and actually melt things on top. So we can take a moment now to basically fill those tanks up just so that they're ready to use for when we require them. So again, four cobblestone will create a, uh, a bucket full of lava. Um, and the problem with using uh, regular clay buckets in this case is that the clay bucket is actually consumed when we use the, uh, the bucket for transporting lava. So we're gonna need to go back and create a few more of those uh, buckets. So let's just make a bunch of them. I think we can uh, craft, let's go one, two, three. Actually, we'll just, we'll just do it enough to fill up a couple of the tanks for now. We don't need to go too crazy because uh, we are gonna do a whole bunch more smelting later. So I think eight buckets will do. That'll give us one spare afterwards. So uh, there we go. We'll have those buckets actually firing up in the furnace there while we're making the rest. Um, okay, so two melters. We're gonna craft the alloy melter as well now. So let's go and grab that. So for the alloy melter, we actually need two of those faucets that we created previously. And uh, we can put another item in the middle um, out of the, the different porcelain lists. So we've got the, uh, the porcelain tanks, the gauges, the windows, that sort of thing. So um, we'll create one more porcelain tank, which we're gonna need some more glass for. So let's grab some sand. Let's get that actually working on some more glass for us while we're doing the rest. Chuck a bit more fuel in there. And there we go. Okay, so a few more buckets. Just while we're waiting, we can start to fill up some more lava in these tanks. So there we go. Let's fill the other side up. Whoop. 
Wrong, t wrong bucket. Okay. So lava is a really, really economical way to heat these uh, smelters. It will become much, much easier once we actually have proper uh, metal buckets because then we won't consume them every time we go to, to fill this up with more lava. Um, but for now, the clay will have to do. So there we go. We've got both of those half full. That should do us for now. Um, okay, now we're also going to want the casting tables and the casting basins. So the casting basins are basically used for us to get whole blocks of material out of the smeltery. So um, they're pretty straightforward, very much like making a uh, cauldron. So we're going to make, uh, I think we're going to actually make, let's go with three of these and I'll uh, explain why in just a second. So we've got uh, one, two, three basins. Okay, now these basins, we're actually gonna put a couple on the side of the smelting area. So back here. So we've got a couple of basins. This means that we'll be able to tap off the back of the melters into the basins and that molten material will go straight in there. Um, now I'm actually also going to put one in the center here because there are gonna be some things as we progress that we'll actually want to m sort of uh, tap off the lava directly into the casting basin. So it comes in handy later when we're making things like end stone, um, where we actually need to use lava um, in a casting basin with another type of block in there to actually sort of uh, transfer it into a different art item type, if you like. So there we go. All right, and we need a couple of casting tables. So let's build those as well. So we have tables, pretty straightforward. It's almost like the opposite of the, uh, the cauldron or the, uh, the basin. So we'll grab one, two of those. And uh, we need to put those down in front of the smeltery as well. So table number one, table number two. Now we're gonna need those taps as well. So those taps that we created a little bit earlier, uh, let's grab those now. We have five of them left, which is great. That should be perfect for today. So we're gonna put a tap on either of these two sides here, which will lead directly off onto the tables. We're going to put a couple on the back here that lead directly into those basins. And we're also going to preemptively just put one on the front here, which leads into that basin in the floor. Uh, the aloe, uh, aloe melter is the last part that we need. So again, we need a porcelain tank as part of that recipe. And uh, there is the aloe tank there. Uh, what are we missing? We need a couple more of the faucets. So fortunately, I have a little bit of porcelain, unfired porcelain left over. So we can do that. So again, creating a tap, and then we fire those two faucets, tap, faucet, whatever you want to call them. Um, and in the meantime, let's actually just create that, uh, that basic heater just to unlock that advancement for us. So we do need a extra furnace, which we can create easily using some of our spare cobble. So there we go. And that is the porcelain heater. We're only doing that for the purpose of getting the getting warmer advancement. Um, after that, we probably won't use it, so we're just going to chuck it in our cabinet here. Okay, so we have our faucets. We have our alloy smelter. That is done. We're going to chuck that down in the middle here. We'll need to add a tap onto that later, but I'm not too fussed right now. We'll just leave it for now. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much ready to go. So we've got our tanks with lava bubbling away there. We can fill up the center tank a little bit later. We've got our casting tables. We've got our casting basins. Now, that is everything we need to start working towards our tin saplings. Now, in order to create a tin sapling, we first need tin amber. The way Sky Factory R4 works with a lot of the metal substances is you can actually create an amber for them, um, usually out of the materials that you get from the, the trees, um, from the saplings. Um, and that amber is actually meltable. You can put it in the smeltery and actually get the molten liquid from the amber, which you can then pour into to bricks or, or blocks um, or whatever else you, you need to craft. Now, in this case, we're making a tin sapling. So the recipe is a little bit different. We need to create amber, and then we're gonna pour the molten tin over the top of the sapling to create the tin sapling. Um, but first up, we need that amber. So in order to create tin amber, let's have a look at the recipe on JEI. So tin amber, pretty straightforward. It's actually made using a combination of different resins from some of the trees that we've got already. So we've got clay resin, we've got bone resin, we've got gravel resin, and we've got a single flint in the middle too. Um, now, fortunately, we don't need too much of this stuff, so we're probably going to be able to just do maybe 
a block of amber, that's probably going to be enough. So let's get the flint, the resin from the clay trees, the bone trees, and the gravel trees from our stocks over the side. So we've got the clay trees. So we need a couple of clay resin. We've got the bone trees. Where are they? Oh, we need the gravel as well. Uh, so we need a couple of those and bone over the side here. So a couple of those. Um, now, the great thing about uh, gravel trees as well is that they actually on occasion will drop uh, flint. And I've been collecting a bit of that and have it stored in our cabinet. So we have those ready to go too. Um, all right, so again, onto the tin amber. We are missing clay bone. What are we missing? We need more bone. Okay. A bit more bone resin. Let's just grab that before we start. Uh, bone. One, two more of those. Okay. Back to the crafting bench. We have our tin amber. Make the tin amber. We've actually unlocked another advancement there. Tin man. So there we go. We're part of the way there. We've got the tin amber. Now let's move over to this uh, tank here and uh, melter which is ready to go. We're going to chuck the tin amber straight in there and you'll see because this has got fuel It's generating heat that is going to start to melt down and as soon as it does it creates two ingots worth of molten tin Fantastic now, that molten tin we can now pour from that melter onto the casting table um, Provided that we've got something sitting on the table um, now checking the recipe for that tin sapling again we actually need a particular type of sapling to pour the molten tin over in order to get our tin sapling. And that is the birch sapling that we actually created previously. So let's uh, go back into our stocks. Do we have any birch saplings left? I don't think we do. No, so we're gonna need to create a couple more. So, uh, all right, just as a refresher, we have birch sapling, which is created through getting a sand sapling and putting it in the cauldron full of water. So let's grab a couple of those. So I'm going to go back to our sand sapling stocks. There we go. We have actually no oh, a bucket of water. A full cauldron of water is going to do four. So we might as well do four. So there we go. We put the water inside the cauldron here. We grab the saplings. We create a bunch of birch saplings. There we go. And we're going to put a birch sapling on our casting table and then pour the molten tin over it. So all we need to do is right click on the tap and that'll start pouring molten tin over the sapling. <coughs> so give that a second to uh, get to 100% uh, progress completion and uh, you'll see that that sapling will actually magically turn into a tin sapling. Bang, there we go. And grab that off the table by right clicking again and we've just made the advancement for the tin saplings. So there we go. It's tin this pack. So we have a tin sapling, fantastic. Now, um, I could put a tin sapling in a bonsai pot right now, but uh, a really good tip when you're creating these saplings that require quite a few resources to create the sapling to begin with, I usually like to grow them the old fashioned method on the dirt block first, um, just to enable me to harvest a whole bunch of the, uh, the tin um, sort of sapling uh, resources and get the wood and, uh, and get the saplings so that I can actually get the saplings directly from the tree instead of the very, very small 5% drop chance that it's gonna come from the, uh, the bonsai pot. So uh, we can go through and uh, just do one run of the tin tree just to grab enough saplings to, to replenish our stocks and uh, then we're gonna be pretty much ready to go. All right, so next on the list, we're gonna start working towards string and getting our bed going. Um, now, string is one of those resources in Sky Factory 4 that is a little tricky to get enough of early on because it takes a while to get uh, your stock of, of uh, string. Um, but there is a shortcut way to doing it. So the cottonwood sapling um, can actually create uh, string by using the cottonwood leaves. If you take the cottonwood leaves and put them on the drying rack, they'll actually dry out into string. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that if you're going to go the bonsai method, we only get leaves, you know, not that often. They're, they're not a huge high percentage drop chance. Uh, we do get a few of them, but not stacks. We've only got six leaves at the moment. Um, but there is a much faster way to get leaves, of course, and that's by just doing it from the, uh, the main tree on the dirt block method um, and using a set of shears. So let's do that. We're going to grab a cottonwood sapling. We're going to craft ourselves some uh, some shears now, um, which is pretty straightforward. We can make wooden shears. That's all we really need to use. So uh, to do wooden shears, I think we just take a block of wood and we want four sticks. There we go. We have some wooden shears. Fantastic. So we're going to grow a cottonwood sapling and uh, then we're going to actually trim all of the branches using the shields, uh, the shears, which will give us enough of that cottonwood branch material to actually dry out into string. 
So let's do that. There we go. Grab the shears and off we go to the place. We are getting a stack of this cotton wood material. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So from that, we've actually got nearly a full stack of uh, cottonwood leaves. Now that is way, way faster than it would have been if we had have, uh, waited for all of the bonsais to do their work. So let's put those cottonwood leaves onto the drying rack and those will create string for us very, very shortly. And uh, while we're waiting for that, we'll just continue chopping down the rest of those trees. So in order to get enough string for the next part of the project, we're actually going to need to get uh, several lots of nine to create three wool blocks and make that bed. So we have, uh, string drying out on the rack which will give us our string advancement and then we need three blocks of wool to make the bed. So I'm just going to take a few minutes to uh, repeat the process on the uh, the drying rack and uh, get that string going and I'll be right back with enough to make that bed for us. So hey, funny story. Remember when I said that you need nine string to create a block of wool? Yeah, I goofed. It's actually only four. So that means that we've got way more string than we need. But that's okay. So uh, we can definitely use that later. So let's grab that string off the drying rack. The cottonwood leaves have done their job. And now we have 24 string, which is plenty for the wool that we need. So well, there's one block of wool, two blocks of wool, three blocks of wool. And that will give us enough to make our bed. So grabbing our wooden planks, grabbing our blocks of wool. There we go. We have a bed. And we're going to chuck that down. Where's somewhere safe? There's not really anywhere super safe at the moment. Um, this will do for now. Let's just put our bed down here. I don't think it will get in the way of anything. So there we go. That's our bed. We have completed pretty much every one of the advancements we set out to do today. We've just got to sleep in a bed, which requires it to be uh, nighttime. Um, but uh, we'll have to wait for that in a little bit. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. We are at the halfway point now, people. We have gotten through a stack of stuff today. Looking forward next episode into jumping into the Iron Age. We've got our smeltery up and running now, so uh, we've got plenty more that we can do. And uh, getting stuck into a little bit of farming as well, which is going to be fantastic. But that's all we've got time for today, so thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope you've uh, picked up some new tips and tricks for our Sky Factory tutorial playthrough. Um, so we'll be back again for more in the very, very near future. Um, in the meantime, make sure that if you want to follow the series, you subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell to get notifications of when new content goes live. And uh, make sure you keep up with everything that we're doing at large at Channel Endgame on our main site at channelendgame.com. So my name's Luke. This has been a lot of fun. We'll be back for another video very soon. Until next time, enjoy mining. <laughs>